off to Dale Jarrett. DJ, Benny Parsons, you got me? I got you, BP. All right, first of all, how's the car? I think it was going to be pretty good. Uh, seems to be uh, able to draft up and hang on. Uh, haven't had it out front that much uh, in the draft, but I think we'll be okay. Do you have your strategy all lined up with a small gas tank? We've talked about a lot of different uh, scenarios for sure. And, uh, well, we've got some action going on before we ever get started here. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. We think we know what we want to do if we can just make all of that happen. Yeah, we had a couple of guys get together coming down for the signal. One lap to go, DJ. Yeah, it looked like Mark was trying to warm up his tires and maybe got a little loose and came over into the 48. So uh, I don't know if there's any damage, but we'll have to see what happens. Oh, man, it's, it's starting early, DJ. Good luck. It is starting early. Uh, hopefully that'll be as much action as we'll have today other than just a lot of passing. All right, man, thanks. And the rest of the starting field for today's EA Sports 500. What was that all about? The 48 right front fender when I looked up was pretty well damaged. Oh, man. Did I? I what do you do about that? I'm monitoring NASCAR's radio. I believe the six team is asking permission to pass the pace car to try and come to pit road and check their car. Permission being denied, of course. You're never allowed to pass the pace car. Hmm. Wow, that's weird. That is weird. And the top two guys in the championship before we even get started. And as I said, there is damage. I saw damage to the right front tire, right front fender. Let's see what we can tell what might have happened. Well, you see Mark on the outside, front row. Left front down so far that the tire hit the fender there, Mark. Oh, uh, that wasn't it, buddy. It was uh, mechanically bound. It was lost. It wasn't a fender. What in the Whoa. world? I have no idea. He's talking like the, the way he's talking to Ben Leslie is all of a sudden he just locked up. He was turning it left, and it would not turn back to the right. He just locked up. And Ben is talking about the air pressure being so low. Matt, what are they saying down there? Benny, Chad Canals was lobbying NASCAR that they could bring the 48 down the hold off, throwing the green. They are not, the way it sounds now, they are not going to do that. Chad is still lobbying. He says that his spotter told him that, that there is damage to the right front fender. Chad is still lobbying. And Rick Hendrick is now coming into the mix, helping to lobby on the 48 team's part. And Matt, while that's going on, they're putting Mark Martin's number up on the board. He's being black flagged. Dave, what's up there? It's okay. It's perfect. Still posting us. They're still posting us. We got to come down and raise the hood. All right. Having some troubles with Dave's microphone. We'll get him fixed in a minute. You see Mark Martin following the pace car down pit road as the field comes to the green flag. One championship contender in trouble before we even start. And he, we heard Ben Lester say NASCAR's posted us. We've got to come down and raise the hood. They do that. They do that as the field goes green. 188 laps to make up the distance at Talladega today. Jimmy Johnson and now Jeff Gordon lead the field to turn one. But obviously Jeff took a look at that fender when he pulled up next to Jimmy Johnson. Didn't think it was bad enough for Jimmy Johnson to come down pit lane. And we see Mark Martin is rolling, but he is completely out of the draft. That means he'll be about three seconds a lap slower than these cars. He needs a caution fast to catch up to the field. Here's Kurt. Hit this time. Hit this time. I want to change right side tire. Tap that fender out. Take the a hammer with you if you've got to. The 48 car. Chad can ask talking about hit this time. It must be rubbing or something. Hit this time. Hit this time. Three one. I can't believe that. Is, that is unbelievable. Wow. So the top two in the championship in trouble already. Well, it is pretty bad then. Yes, it is. We yeah. see the damage of that right front fender. Jeff Gordon leads lap one, Rusty Wallace to his outside. They're three deep right behind him. Matt Yoakum. And what will seem like an eternity, Jimmy Johnson finally comes to a stop. You can see the right front cosmetic damage. Shane Parstow going to work, trying to pull out that front balance, beating it with a hammer as they lose more and more time. Chad Canales, the crew chief underneath, trying to beat out the front balance right underneath the Monte Carlo decal, changing right side tires. Jimmy now is finally down and away. A tough break for today's point leader. He's going to lose a lap. Yeah, he's going to go a lap down real quick here. 
These engines, the restricted engines, take a long time to get up to speed, and this pack is coming at him full steam. Why wouldn't you have come in on the pace lap when they weren't up to speed? You wouldn't have lost as much ground. Well, because Mark Martin was black flag, had to come in, and he's about a half lap behind where Jimmy Johnson is going to get past in probably five or six laps. Yes. Not even that long. I mean, he's coming off turn two, and this is yeah, the pack. Yeah, you're right. So he's got to get overtaken this lap. But see, they were just coming up to speed when Mark came in, so he had a lot more time. What do you say, Matt? Well, Wally, one thing. While under the pace lap, Chad Knauss radioed Jimmy Johnson and said, is it smoking? When they took the green coming out of two, he says, is it smoking? His radio was breaking up. Chad could not take a chance that possibly it was smoking because it is a great distance from the front stretch to the back stretch. Dave. Matt, Mark Martin radioed in before the problem occurred on the pace lap that he had a steering situation. NASCAR required them to pit because they wanted them to check the steering problem. Apparently that was okay, and when they also checked for any damage on the six car, that too is okay. So Mark Martin is running 42nd on the backstretch. The field's into turn one, coming up on 43rd place, Jimmy Johnson. And this race has gotten bizarre right from the get-go. Like I said, there had to be some kind of re radio communication problem because Jeff Gordon obviously saw that fender on his team, I mean, the car that he part owned, and knew it was going to be a problem. But now, maybe Jimmy did not get the message. Best thing Jimmy could do is try to tag on to Jeff Gordon here, right? He try did. and stay up there and hope that, you know, somebody gives him a lap back and a caution. Yep, too late. Because now he's back about 10th spot. So well, at, this point, at this point now, I would get out of the draft completely and just right in the back in case something does happen, you're not going to be in it. Try to dodge the wreck. Okay, so while we've been paying attention to what's been going on with the championship leaders, the race lead has changed hands. Jeff Gordon is shuffled back, and Matt Kenseth goes to the point. Matt, one of the five drivers who could win the million-dollar bonus from Winston today. Top five finishers from the Richmond race, second weekend of September. If one of them can win the race today, they get a million-dollar bonus, and a fan gets a million.